Okay, uh, welcome to Mass Transfer, the first set of notes uh, where we'll talk about uh, what is mass transfer, how do we quantify mass, and give you a little bit of an introduction to mass and molar flux. The reading associated with this is from the text, uh, chapter 24.1. So what I'm showing here is a box, and inside that box has dimensions of B. So every dimension here, the length, width, and height are all of length B. And inside that box, we put all of these little particles inside it. And each one of these particles, they're atoms. Let's say that these are helium atoms. Let's see if I can align this. Let's say that each one of these are helium atoms, and they're all moving with a particular velocity in any which direction. You have to imagine that these are lined up. Okay, and they're all moving with velocity v. Um, <clears throat> we need to know some other information about this. So inside this box, there's a certain pressure, p, uh, and it's at a certain temperature, t. So now we've defined a box that has a certain number of moles in it, n, pressure p, temperature t, and those atoms of helium are moving with a certain velocity v. The question I want to ask you is how long would it take for a particle to move from one wall to the other. So what I'm really saying is this molecule over here, or this atom over here, how long would it take for it to zip all the way across that cube of length B? So to answer this, let's pull up a little simulation. Okay, to answer that question, we're going to run a simulation. So what I have here is a simulation using Monte Carlo where each one of these particles represent atoms, and each one of these atoms move with a certain velocity. They're allowed to collide uh, with other atoms in the space. It's essentially uh, Newtonian physics where just you have these hard spheres bumping into each other. There's a conservation of energy throughout. So the blue molecules represent uh, water, a solvent and the red molecules represent a drop of dye that we put inside that water. So let's go ahead and see what will happen if we decide to allow this simulation to run in time. So there it is. So this is random molecular motion, molecules bumping into each other, bumping into walls, some are moving faster, some are moving slower, some transfer energy to other uh, molecules over there. But here's the fun part. Let me pause that. If I decide to trace a random molecule and try to find one near an edge, keep bouncing. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, so if I'm tracing this single red molecule, how long before it gets to the other side of the wall? Remember, that's what that's what we're asking. So let's go ahead and trace that and hit play. And we can start the timer over here in the bottom, which is in picoseconds. And you can see the path as it goes along and sometimes it's moving forward in a direct path. Other times it's gonna reverse on us uh, and bounce backward. This time it actually took a relatively straight path, but then it reverses. Okay, so you can see it could potentially be a substantial amount of time before that moves throughout. Uh, we'll get to this other part later in the course, um, but the effect of temperature, of course, as you increase temperature, everything moves faster. 